So for no reason at all, I decided to make another tier list video, but this time we're going to be ranking all the Miatas. Now before we start, just like the last video, I want to let you guys know that I'm not an expert on Miatas. I've only owned one, so I'm more than likely to get some things wrong. So if you hear me say something that doesn't sound quite right, please leave a comment down below correcting me. I really appreciate it when you guys do that because it gives other people the right information as well. Now you might be thinking that there are only 4 generations of Miatas, and you're right, but just like the last video, I'm also going to include major updates so that way the video is not 2 minutes long. I'm also going to include special editions for each Miata. They're not going to be their own entries, but they will factor into the placing on the tier list. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Starting off with the first generation of Miatas, the NA Miatas, we got the one that started it all, the NA6. I mean, what hasn't been said about this car? It's by far the most iconic Miata, and it's probably the one that you think of when you think of a Miata. And it makes sense, because despite being almost 35 years old, you really wouldn't guess from looking at it, since it has an incredibly beautiful design, just a great soft top roadster, and it came with the option for a removable hardtop too. And of course, it would be dumb not to mention the pop-up headlights. Who doesn't love a good set of pop-up headlights? They just kind of give that little cherry on top to the whole thing. Honestly, I think all cars should have pop-up headlights. Now this car's base model came with none of the luxuries of modern cars. It came with manual windows, it didn't have air conditioning, and it didn't even have power steering. But don't worry, because Mazda introduced these features in packages later on, beginning with the limited edition in 1991 and continuing on with more special editions every year. Now an interesting fact that you probably already knew is that the 6 in NA6 is for the 1.6 liter inline 4 engine that the Miata had, which made 115 horsepower. Now I know that it's not a very impressive number, but you probably know, if you clicked on this video, that power is not the main attraction of the Miata. Instead, the nimble, lightweight sportiness of this car is what made it a massive hit. It's the best selling Miata to this day, and it single handedly revived the two seater sports car genre, inspiring other great companies to make other great cars, such as the S2K, the BMW Z models, the TT, the Boxer, and so many others. Without the Miata, these cars probably wouldn't exist. And if that doesn't deserve S tier, I don't know what does. Now moving on, we got the second NA Miata, the NA6's slightly stronger younger brother, the NA8. This Miata sported an upgraded 1.8 liter engine, which made around 130 horsepower. Not the biggest improvement, but there's an improvement nonetheless. This Miata also introduced a Torsen limited slip differential, and it had its chassis reinforced, making its handling slightly better. In 1994, Mazda introduced the R package, which was a more track-focused version of the car. And there were also special editions every year as well. These added options like cruise control, the aforementioned Torsen LSD, and a bunch of cool colors. Now obviously, this is an improvement over the first NA Miata, but it's nothing too crazy to be honest. And some people still prefer the NA6 over the NA8. Despite all of this, it's still an NA Miata, and I think it deserves a solid A tier. Now we're on to the second generation, the NB Miata. And of course, we gotta start off with the NB1 Miata. At the turn of the millennium, Mazda came out swinging. They took everything that made the NA Miata great and then they improved and added onto it, including a sleek new design, which is loosely inspired by the FD, which you can kind of tell because of how timeless it is, just like the FD. It's also slightly wider than the NA and a little more aerodynamic too. Unfortunately, this design got rid of pop-up headlights because of some stupid reason like pedestrian safety or something dumb like that. And that's probably the only thing I don't like about it. To be honest, I think I like the NB's design better than the NA. It's close, but the NB is just a little sleeker and its curves just really turn me on. And its curves just really make it look more like a sports car. It just barely edges it out in terms of looks. 
The engine was pretty much the same 1.8 liter engine as before, but it did have some improved power, which made it get around 140 horsepower. And this slight increase in power was put to good use, because Mazda also upgraded the handling, with some better wheels, better sway bars, and the inclusion of ABS, among some other things. In 1999, Mazda celebrated the Miata's 10th anniversary with a special edition of the car, which came with improved suspension, a Torsen LSD, a 6-speed manual, and some other things as well. And it came in this beautiful color. For the 2000 model year, a few features became standard that weren't in the previous generation, including power windows, power steering, and many others. But overall, the first NB Miata was a great car that continued the momentum from the NA. Just another amazing car by Mazda. I think it deserves a solid S tier. Just behind the NA6. Now we're onto the NB2 Miata, which saw a few improvements from the previous Miata, mainly cosmetic changes on the front bumper and the interior, including these gorgeous gauges right here. It's a small touch, but one that I really enjoy. This Miata also added variable valve timing, which along with a few other improvements, made it get an extra 2 whole horsepower in the US and 12 horsepower overseas. Just an absolutely massive improvement right there. Mazda also reinforced the body rigidity and the 6-speed was now an option, as well as new wheels, bigger brakes, the limited slip differential, and some other things that were no longer just limited to special editions. Now in 2002, Mazda created the Special Performance MX-5, also known as the SP. This was a super limited model with a turbocharged engine that made 200 horsepower. To this day, this is the most powerful factory release Miata, and honestly, I wish they made more. In 2003, Mazda introduced a few more limited and special editions, including the ultra-rare Roadster Coupe. This Miata looks incredible, and I really wish Mazda made more of these. Just look at it. It just looks incredible. And now that I'm looking at it, this back part kind of reminds me of the fastback on the ND. Now, take this with a grain of salt, but it could be that Mazda was inspired by this one to make the ND hardtop. But anyways, 2004 saw something big come for the Miata, and that was the Mazda Speed Miatas. Now, for a while, Mazda Speed had been its own separate thing from the Mazda brand. But in 1999, Mazda bought Mazda Speed, and for the 2004 model year, they were ready to release the Mazda Speed Miata. Now just like the SP, these Miatas were turbocharged. Unfortunately, they didn't make as much power at 178 horsepower. But on the positive side, they made way more of these than they did the SP. In fact, if you're on the market for an NB Miata, chances are you might come across a few of these. They also upgraded the suspension, transmission and clutch, and some other elements for the Mazda Speed Miatas and it also came in some cool colors. But perhaps the most important fact for the NB2 is the fact that I drive one. Nah, I'm just kidding. Objectively, even though there wasn't much improvement from the NB1, the Special Editions plus the Mazda Speed Miata carry the NB2 to S tier. And if you factor in the points from being the one that I drive, it takes it all the way to the top of S tier. Yes, this is the brand new MX-5, and frankly, you wouldn't blame it for hating its dad right now. Now we've reached the third generation, the NC Miata, starting with the NC1 Miata. Now I'm just getting this out of the way, but I don't like the NC Miata styling. If the MB styling was inspired by the best parts of the RX-7, then the NC styling was inspired by the worst parts of the RX-8. It just looks kind of bloated to me, and it's kind of a boring design in my opinion. Look at the NA's body line. Oh, beautiful. Now look at the NB's body line. Oh, beautiful. Now compare those to the NC's body line. You see what I'm getting at? It's just kind of flat, and there's just not that much excitement there. But design and looks are only part of a car, especially for the NC. It had a 2 liter engine which made 170 horsepower, which is kind of crazy for a Miata. And this increase in power came with an increase in safety. Mazda added traction and stability control for this Miata. It came with either a 5-speed or a 6-speed transmission with a limited slip differential. And it also came with the option for paddle shifters for the automatic variants, which I think are pretty cool. The NC also introduced a power retractable hardtop, also known as the PRHT. This retractable hardtop did increase weight a little bit, but it was more than worth it. 
I mean, as an owner of an NB, I'm pretty jealous of a hardtop that can come down whenever you want it to. But speaking of weight, the NC is also hated for being heavier than all the other Miatas. But realistically, the difference between the weights of an NB and an NC is the weight of a fully grown person. And it's also about the same difference between the NB and the NA. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. The special editions for the NC1 were okay. A few of them had special cosmetic enhancements, but it was really nothing to write home about. Overall, the NC definitely had a large improvement over the NB, but I really think they dropped the ball on the design. So I think I'm gonna have to put this Miata on a low to mid B tier. Moving on, we have the NC2 Miata. The main improvement for this one was a facelift on the front, which makes it look way better in my opinion. The interior was also improved, and the 6-speed transmission was improved as well, but it still wasn't standard for the base model, as was the case with the limited slip differential. The red line was raised slightly, so you could get a couple hundred more RPMs out of it, and there were also a few cool special editions, and the Miata 20th Anniversary Edition. These came with the 6-speed transmission, LSD, a few cosmetic enhancements, and some really cool colors. What else is new? Now, to be honest, there wasn't much change between the NC2 and the NC1, but that's because there didn't really need to be. The NC2 improved the only thing it needed to, which was the looks of the NC1, and it made me not hate the NC. I think it deserves a solid A tier for that. And now we got the NC3 Miata, which included another mainly visual update. Now, the improvement for this one was not as drastic as before. It looks better, but just barely. There was also some slight improvements to throttle response and braking. Unfortunately, once again, the 6-speed and the LSD were not made standard for the base model. And of course, there were the special editions with the cool colors that basically every other Miata has. But notably, among these, was the Miata 25th Anniversary Edition, which was the first Miata to include the color Soul Red, which I think is a beautiful color. It actually inspired the color of the wrap on my car, so you can tell how much I like it. But other than that, there was really not a lot for the NC3. Once again, this is because there really wasn't a lot to improve for the NC, but unlike the NC2, the looks didn't improve that much either, so I think I'm gonna have to put it below the NC1. Realistically, I would put it in a low B tier, but since this is probably the lowest Miata we're gonna get, and I have to fill up the C tier with something, I'm gonna have to put it in C tier. I hope you NC3 fans don't hate me too much for this. Now we can move on to the fourth generation, the ND Miata. Starting off with the ND1 Miata, it kind of looks like this emoji. So we'll just put it right here. All jokes aside, I really like the design and the award winning looks. I think Mazda made a good choice going back to curvaceous body lines. And although it has the frown that all modern cars have, combined with the classic Miata smile, the ND1 just looks like a mischievous little fella. On top of its great looks, the ND1 was also lighter and shorter than the predecessor. The engine was a 2 liter that made around 155 horsepower, and the 6 speed transmission was finally standard. Unfortunately, the LSD still wasn't, but that's okay. In late 2016, Mazda introduced the RF, also known as the retractable fastback. This is the hardtop ND that everyone's used to. It weighs around 100 pounds, but it's absolutely beautiful, and it's just mesmerizing to watch go up and down. In fact, why don't we take a little minute just to look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. That's just great. Anyways, the ND1 had a few special editions with cosmetic enhancements, the best of which, in my opinion, is the RF Launch Edition. Just look at it. Overall, the ND1 was a pretty solid start to a new generation, and with its great looks, I think it deserves a very solid A tier. Now next up, we got the ND2 Miata. The ND1 walked, so the ND2 could run. It had an improvement in power, making 181 horsepower, which is nuts for a Miata. They also increased the red line, and it also received many modern upgrades, as well as a bunch of new options. The suspension and wheels were also upgraded, among some other stuff. And in 2022, Mazda introduced KPC, also known as Kinematic Posture Control, which helped reduce body roll during cornering. A change which was mostly welcomed, but it did come with some criticism and some indifference. 
The special editions for the ND2 are also an improvement over the ND1. These include the 2018 Miata 30th Anniversary Edition, the 2020-21 100th Mazda Anniversary Edition, among many others. Once again, the special features for these were mainly cosmetic, but there were way more than the ND1. Overall, the ND2 is yet another example of a substantial improvement found in the second Miata in a generation, and I think it's enough to earn a spot in S tier. Now we got the ND3. Now I know that the ND3 just barely released. I think the orders are arriving in the United States in March. But I included the S650 in my Mustang tier list video back when it wasn't even released yet. And the ND3 has released, so it just makes sense to include it for this video. Now I barely know anything about it, so I'll just try to rank it from what I could find online. As far as I know, the improvements that are on the ND3 are different headlights and taillights, a new gray color, a new infotainment system, some slight interior upgrades, and some handling improvements including a new type of limited slip differential for models that come with the LSD. Unfortunately, it's slightly more expensive. To be honest, so far it doesn't seem like much of an improvement, so I think for now I'll just have to put it at a mid-B tier, but it's just a placeholder for now, so it could go up in the future. But yeah, the tier list is all caught up now. Just go ahead and take a moment to appreciate it and take it in. We just ranked 10 different Miatas across 4 generations. And we'll probably get the 5th generation NE within the next few years. So I'll probably add it to the list when that happens. But until then, this is the list. But now I want to hear what you guys think about this list. Do you agree or do you disagree? Go ahead and leave a comment down below with any opinions, corrections, or feedback. Those are always welcome and appreciated. And leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Oh, and also, please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you can go ahead and check out this video if you want. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.